Hello, my lovelies. Today, we're talking about bashing overwhelm and changing the stupid made up rules we think we have to live by. Why are we talking about this right now? Because everyone I know seems to be dealing with overwhelm and chaos in some form or fashion. And it only seems to get worse when the holiday season comes around. And you know it's coming for us sooner rather than later, right? So I wanna get ahead of the game and talk to you about it right now. Part of what prompted this episode was a situation I went through the other day. I wasn't feeling great. I hadn't slept well for a couple of nights in a row. One, because my own body woke me up way too early. And the other was a neighbor's dog being right outside my window at 440 in the morning. Yeehaw. So let me just say, I have mostly stellar neighbors, but there's occasionally one neighbor that's so very hard to love. And we're dealing with that right now. Anyway. I had less than nine hours of sleep in two days, so I finally went to bed early and slept really well. The result of that was that I got up later than usual, and that caused a bit of stress. I also normally empty the dishwasher from the night before, first thing in the morning, but in my tired stupor the night before, I forgot to start the dishwasher. And yes, those are both very small things and very much first world problems. But isn't it often the little things that send us over the edge? So while I was getting more and more stressed about being behind, my husband was calmly getting ready for work. And the calmer he was, the more agitated I got because, you know, obviously, he should be getting frustrated with me or at least commiserating with me, right? As he was leaving, my husband said he hoped that when I meditated, something that I do every day, that I would break out of my funk and have a productive day. That man knows me so well because when I'm in a funk, I rarely accomplish anything. So I sat down to meditate and I had the strangest thought. Out of nowhere, I got this idea that all the rules about me getting up at a certain time and having the dishwasher emptied by the time my husband heads out for work are completely made up. Now I know this. We all do. But for some reason, it was a knowing on a deeper level, which led me to realize that all the rules are made up by someone. And until we start questioning them, they can lead us to some pretty weird places, like living with perfectionism and procrastination, which means never really living at all. The thing is that perfectionism and procrastination are the evil twins that spawn over well. And they're all from a family of made up rules, some by us and some by others who taught us how to be in this world from their own made up rules that had been passed on to them. Friends, I have seen women put themselves through the most awful mental abuse because they have to clean their house, have to in in quotations, clean their baseboards, all of them with a toothbrush to have a clean house. The problem is that they can only bring themselves to do that when there's company coming when they already have a myriad of other things to do, but they'll lose hours of sleep over cleaning those baseboards when most people wouldn't even bat an eye at it if they never touched them. Do you see how toxic this can be? Look, if you love cleaning your baseboards and it gives you great joy, go for it. Because I do know people who truly get satisfaction from doing that. I don't understand it, but you do you, boo especially if it makes you happy. What I'm talking about is some awful voice in your head that tells you if you don't spend at least an hour scrubbing your baseboards with a toothbrush, then you're, especially when you're exhausted and need sleep, that somehow you're losing at life. It's time to tell that voice to shut up and go to bed because no one's judgment of your baseboards is worth your well-being. Agreed? Overwhelm is a condition created by the perfectionism and procrastination monsters in your head. You keep avoiding something because you think it'll take so much longer than it actually will. And I cannot tell you how many times I've had that happen in my own life, and it occasionally still does. If you follow my Moving Toward Better Facebook page, you know that I recently did a two-week declutter challenge. And the second week, I decided to work in my basement because my husband does the majority of our laundry and the folding area was getting cluttered. 
I didn't want to work down there, mostly because I didn't want to spend the entire week working on that project. But I so appreciate him doing the laundry that I said I would do it. Want to know how long it took me to clear the entire section for him? Two 15-minute sessions. And the bonus was that I got my gift area and my wrapping area cleaned up for the holidays as well. That led to me scheduling a charity pickup. So the Monday after the declutter challenge ended, 40 items left our home and I do a little internal happy dance every time I walk downstairs. Overwhelmed conquered this time anyway. So what do you do when you feel overwhelmed? Most people would tell you to get up and do something, but that isn't always the best strategy. I'm more inclined to tell you to sit down with a piece of paper and a pen. If you absolutely have to use digital tools, use the notes app on your phone because you're going to write down all of the things you think you want to do, have to do, need to do both by yourself or that requires help from somebody else to do them. I promise you it will be eye opening. You can either use separate sheets of paper to do this or make categories or whatever makes sense to your brain. Then I want you to estimate how long you think each thing will take and what, if any, prep work you need to do to make it happen. After you've done that, pick one thing that you think will take less than an hour, set a timer for 15 minutes, and see how far you get. I told you about the laundry table earlier. Here's one that happened the morning I decided to make this podcast. I recently purchased some new workout shirts. I keep all my graphic tees and workout shirts in the same drawer. And the drawer was full before I purchased the shirt, the new shirts. I let that stack of new workout shirts sit there for nearly two weeks because I kept telling myself that I didn't have the time to clean out that drawer. What happened is that area where I left that stack of shirts laying on the hope chest, my hope chest, which is also where I lay out my clothes every day, that little bit of clothing The clutter just seemed to multiply until I couldn't even see the top of the hope chest anymore. So this morning I decided, or the morning I was, you know, getting ready to record this podcast, I decided that this was the time to clear it off. Guess what? Including the time it took to pull out all the shirts from the drawer that I wanted to donate, the sports bra that I tossed because there's no way I would dare donate that thing. (laughs) and reorganized the drawer, it took less than 10 minutes. Two weeks of clutter rather than 10 minutes of follow through. You see what I mean? So while I teach it, I'm also still learning it. And I absolutely understand that what I just said may be difficult for people who are task oriented to understand. When you start a job, you wanna finish it. But those of us who are people oriented, benefit from learning to not only tackle things like this regularly, we also need to make all of our big jobs a series of smaller jobs so that we can set ourselves up for a level of success, which is especially important if you're not as young as you used to be and don't have the energy or focus that you had even a few years ago. For those of you who are task oriented, that's a great way to think about when you talk about a project with either a young child or a person who's people oriented, someone with ADHD, someone who has autism, we may need that chunking up. You know, my sister-in-law and I were talking recently um, about that, that whole situation. And it's something I wish we'd both learned earlier. At some point in our lives, most people lose the ability to do, and I'm putting that in air quotes, for hours even the fun stuff. My sister-in-law loves to work in her yard. And when we were younger, she would be out there for eight or nine hours and be ready to do it again the following week. Now she doesn't have the stamina for that. So she has to work on sections of her yard at a time or get help. And most of the time she'd rather do it herself. So she just chunks it up. I was never one for yard work, but I would go to sports games, then go to the grocery store, then come home and make dinner and go out for the evening and be ready to go again the next day. These days, I still love doing all those things, but not necessarily on the same day. And if I do, you can bet I'm going to need a rest day in the next day or two. This even happens on vacation. We used to be able to go, go, go and have fun every day of the vacation doing all the things. Nowadays, we build in some downtime to just sit and enjoy wherever we are. 
That may mean that we take a shorter trail than our kids so that we can sit and enjoy the scenery or do some people watching at Muir Woods. It could mean that we take a bus tour and order in for dinner so we don't overtax ourselves. And it can mean that we pick a day to just hang out or take a drive around the area and really not do much of anything. The point is that we make the rules, or rather we chuck the rules out the window and do what makes us happy. The first time I ever remember that happening was when I got to go on tour on a tour of England with my college, my college's men's basketball team. I was in charge for publicity for them, for our university. And they got this opportunity to travel through England, playing various clubs and university teams. There were three young women who worked for the team, and we were all invited to join the trip, and we all did. For what a plane ticket would normally cost, I got to go to England and tour part of the country for 10 days. We stayed with families, and we had the time of our lives. One day, we were touring the Tower of London, and we got news that Charles and Diana were coming to lunch with the mayor. This was not long after they got married and long before they had children. We were scheduled at the same time to be at what I swear our tour guide called the Black Tower, but apparently is now called the Bloody Tower. Maybe it already always was. I don't know. And if we stayed to see Diana and Charles, we would miss the Bloody Tower. The coach of the team was a huge fan of Diana, and we all knew that seeing her would be a dream come true for him. So we skipped the tower in lieu of seeing the, the, fav- the famous couple. And it's a memory that I still cherish because that coach passed away about 10 years later at a very young age. And it makes me happy to remember how happy and grateful he was on that day that he got to see Diana. So rather than follow the rules, we made up our own and we had a blast doing it. So bringing this all back to overwhelm, procrastination and perfectionism, what's a person to do? I've already told you how to handle overwhelm in the moment by making your list. That's a great first step. The next step for many is to get help. And I'm not talking about hiring someone to help you, although there are people who can truly make a difference in your life by helping you rid yourself of clutter and get your home in order. Whether that's a cleaning person, a home organizer, a feng shui consultant, if we're you know talking about our homes, In business, if you're in a position to hire someone, an assistant can be invaluable to overcoming overwhelm, perfectionism, and procrastination. But if you're not there yet, you can get free help. How? By buddying up with somebody who's willing to help you with what you need. For example, I would love to have an assistant in my business, but the budget doesn't allow for it. Although I've seen people hire assistants when they couldn't even afford to pay themselves. Instead, a friend and I are accountability partners. We have different needs, but we offer each other support the way that each of us needs it. I need something loosely structured that's very flexible. My accountability partner needs something more structured that provides some flexibility because the nature of her business is different than mine. The great part about that is we've developed a sense for when the other is overwhelmed or giving into perfectionism or procrastination And we call each other out in an appropriate way and help each other get back on track. Cool, huh? Your personality can play a huge role in all of this as well. As most of you know, when I talk about the DISC personalities, including the driven, inspired, supportive, and cautious personality types, we also call them the D, I, S, and C personalities. If a driven person is feeling overwhelmed, things can get very tense. First, they hate feeling behind, or that they can't get things done in a timely manner. Perfection isn't usually part of their makeup, but if they don't like something, they can be quite the procrastinators. When they finally engage, though, they will burn through the task like nobody's business. And when they're in that mode, leave them alone if you can, because any interruption will most certainly be met with frustration at a minimum and outright hostility if you break the flow too much. If you are a D person, delegation can be your best friend, if you can do that. If not, challenge yourself with a deadline and tell someone about it so you stick to it. Pledge to do something really unpleasant if you don't live up to the challenge. You know you love a good challenge. So make it work for you 
and give yourself an awesome treat when you succeed. For the I personality, you often procrastinate because whatever you're facing seems so boring and you hate being bored, but you can ask for help. You may not have help in your home or office, but there's a myriad of ways to co-work or body double and get more work done than you can even imagine. Also, you're a personality that can use things like music to drown out all of the things that can distract you and it actually makes you concentrate better. I have a playlist of songs I've played hundreds of times. It's a playlist I love that I can actually sing along to while I create and I don't even realize I'm doing it. It's sometimes my greatest defense against what I call an ADHD day when my focus is not so great. Honestly, I listen to that playlist while creating this podcast. I've used music most of my life to help with focus, and I'm so grateful I figured that piece out for myself. The S and C personalities, being more reserved, can find themselves overwhelmed more quickly than the outgoing D and I personalities. But with the right skills, they can deal with it and be just as badass about overcoming it as the I and D personalities. For the S personality, it's often a matter of setting and following through on boundaries, which is so difficult for the supportive person. When the S person struggles with boundaries, they tend to retreat. But when they do that, it multiplies the stress, the overwhelm, and the procrastination. So what does the supportive personality benefit from? Communication. Friend, please realize that everyone struggles with overwhelm. But the S personality sinks faster than the others because of it. And if the S personality lets it go too far, they can tip into passive aggressiveness and then flat out rudeness. For those who are used to the supportive person's naturally helpful nature, they don't know how to respond. If they return that anger with more anger, the S person will completely shut down. If they ignore it, nothing gets done. So my dear S personality, please communicate the moment you start feeling overwhelmed because you are the most adept at knowing what overwhelm feels like. And if you ask before you get frustrated, you're much more likely to get it. The key is to communicate directly because you know you are the master of hints. And if you're getting frustrated, the people around you aren't getting it. (laughs) I know you think they should get it, again in air quotes, but they don't think the same way you do. So please give yourself the opportunity to succeed by saying what you feel rather than hinting at it. The C personality is the most likely to deal with overwhelm from perfection, because as we know, the cautious personality wants everything to be perfect. And if they don't have time to make it that way, they will ignore it until they do have the time. Then, when they finally address the thing they've avoided, if anything goes wrong, there is going to be a meltdown. As I've said before, there are 24,000 plotting points on the disk chart. So some C personalities have some of the more outgoing types in their, in their personality blend. Some of them are more reserved. If the cautious person is more outgoing, that meltdown can be epically dramatic. If they're more on the reserve side, they will turn their anger inward. Either way, it doesn't do anyone any good. And the cure for the C personality is the same as it is for the S personality, and that's communication. The C personality, however, benefits from turning down your sarcasm, and you know how sarcastic you can be. And while it can be stress relieving for you to be sarcastic, if you want help getting through your overwhelm, it pays to keep those sarcastic comments to yourself. <laughs> Depending on your relationships, you can share them later when you get through the task and hopefully you'll have a good laugh about it then. So here's something to think about. In most instances, overwhelm, procrastination, and perfectionism are isolating and make you feel so alone. So the remedy to that is to get other people involved. In addition, having another perspective can help you find better solutions. If you can't get someone to help, you know I am a huge proponent of timers. 
Again, while working on this podcast, I use the magic of 15 minutes because my ADHD can get the best of me even when I'm in the zone. Because I go to research something and I end up going down a rabbit hole and I end up not finishing my work. That timer keeps me on task or redirects me when I've left the zone entirely. And finally, part of the reason I did this at this time was because the holidays are coming. And as all of us know, the holidays can be one of the worst times for being overwhelmed. I'm gonna remind you again that my friend Janine and I of Sweet Humble Home are working on a holiday bundle that is going to help you deal with all of the many tasks and personalities you'll be dealing with this holiday season. To learn more about that, head over to the Moving Toward Better website and sign up for our email community. There's so much good that's gonna happen and I really want you to be a part of it. So until next time, keep moving toward better, keep shining your light as brightly as you can, and I'll see you soon. Love you all. At Moving Toward Better, it's our mission to help you unlock a fantastic life powered by what's unique and authentically you. To learn how we can help you in your quest, head over to movingtowardbetter.com to check it out or use the links in the show notes. Thanks for listening. Thanks for being you and have a great day. Love you all.